I've been using my Panasonic G7 for quite a while. It has actually been my main camera for the longest time, and it still is, even if I do have other equipment to use. Honestly, this is a very amazing camera, a complete 4K beast that I love to use, and it still gives me the results that I would expect it to in 2019. And by the way, I did make a full review, and by the way, I did make a full review on this camera on the channel, and I will be leaving a link to that down in the description. With that said, this is actually a very good vlogging camera. I decided to go ahead and actually build up a 4K budget vlogging setup in order to go ahead and prove that point. All of this here was also done on a budget for around $600. That said, let's talk about it and let's get started. This video is sponsored by Feefine, the makers of one of my favorite microphone kits of all time. Sound like a pro on a budget with their T669 kit. And say goodbye to overspending on audio setups moving forward. Affiliate links in the description. Now, the most important part of the setup is obviously going to be the camera. And here we've got the Panasonic Lumix G7. This camera is a small mirrorless camera that has a flip-out screen that you would want for this sort of thing, has a hot stream mount and a microphone port, which means that you don't have to depend on having to use an external audio recorder to get your audio. This is an all-in-one package in a sense when you try to look at it that way. Now attach, I decided to just go for the kit lens, the 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens, just because it will give you pretty good results. And at 14 millimeters, it's definitely wide enough to give you those vlogging style shots that you would want. So this is very good for those purposes already. I also did it for the sake of keep being the price pretty low for this whole package in general. Now this camera with the kit lens usually retails or could be found for around 480 bucks. The microphone of choice here is going to be the Rode Video Mic Go. The reason why I went for this microphone instead of the Video Micro, which is one of the most popular ones for vlogging, is because this one is a longer microphone. Hence, it has better range than the, than the Video Micro. With that said, I do understand that this microphone is larger and actually maybe pretty big for what we're going to be using it for. It can get you a good amount of attention. However, this camera isn't the smallest one in the world. So on its own, it is already going to get you some attention. And if you're vlogging outside, then people are going to stare at you no matter what. So having a microphone that could give you better results in the video micro might be best. And that also looks better with this camera, in my opinion, than the micro, because the micro is so much smaller than this camera overall. And in terms of sound quality, this microphone still sounds really good, I would say. And it also comes with the included wind socket, which would make it perfect for vlogging outdoors and to help block off any of the winds that could be hitting this microphone directly so that your audio doesn't get messed up. Also, it is very convenient that it is primarily powered just through the microphone port. You don't have to worry about powering it externally, which is awesome. You plug it in and it's ready to go. This microphone with the wind socket, they usually come together retail for around $60. Next up is going to be the Gorillapod 1K model. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Why would I go with the 1K, considering that this isn't the smallest camera in the world and this isn't the smallest microphone in the world. Well, the 1K is definitely sufficient enough to hold both this camera and the microphone together since both of these are actually very light, even combined. This little guy is a lot sturdier than a lot of people give it credit for. Even though it does consist primarily of plastic, it does have a good amount of heft either way. It is still lightweight, but it is so comfortable to hold because of the rubber rings around it as well. It's just ideal for this sort of thing. And even if you're going to prop it up on a table, it'll still hold it down just fine. This is a very good little gorilla pod for what it is. This one also has a bit of a swivel here so you can adjust it to tilt it back and forth if you would want to and adjust the tightness of that, which is pretty useful. All of these things will definitely come in handy. This gorilla pod comes in at around 40 bucks. And lastly, if we're going to be vlogging in 4K, then we definitely want to get a card that is big enough and fast enough to support that kind of footage since 4K can be pretty memory consuming. That said, we decided to go for a 128 gig SD card from Samsung. This card is fast enough to support 4K and it's plenty of storage for the kinds of videos that we will be shooting, which again, it's all going to be in 4K. That takes up a lot more data than 1080p usually does. It's going to be big enough to hold as much footage as we would like throughout the day. And all I had to do is just offload it from the camera at the end of the day. 128 gigs is actually plenty. This micro C card usually retails for around 20 bucks, which is great. Now with that out of the way, I would like to talk about some of the settings that I use to vlog. So this is everything I go over before I start vlogging if I'm using this camera. So firstly, I set this camera to 4K, 24 frames per second. This is my preferred shooting method. I know a lot of people prefer 30 frames per second. That is all going to be based off of preference, but I'm a 24 frames per second guy. So let's stick with that. I also keep the lens at its 14, 
8mm set to get the widest shot I possibly can. Also, I shoot with my preamps at negative 12 decibels to get the cleanest audio I can. I stick to the manual mode, or M, on the camera, which lets you customize this camera to your heart's content, at the very least the frame and how the video will be shot. For focus settings, I actually like to keep this camera at continuous autofocus. I like to turn on quick autofocus to make sure that it's focusing as quickly as it possibly can, but also I like to set this camera to one area autofocus. Considering that this camera is notorious for having bad autofocus, which would suck for vlogging, but if you set this camera to one area autofocus, that will fix everything for you. It's going to focus very quickly and easily on you even if you're shooting in 4K. So that would be ideal for the setup. So with that said, this is what it all looks like and sounds like. Okay, so right now, this is going to be the indoors test. In other words, you're not going to hear any sort of wind trying to disrupt the footage or, well, the audio in that case. And from what I can tell, the video quality does look very good. I actually do have this in a manual setting that I mentioned earlier. And it is doing a fairly good job of focusing on my face. So I am just holding this at one length the entire time. Um, however, still I'm very satisfied with how this looks and so forth. The microphone up ahead should be recording pretty good audio right now either way. But with that said, I do like what this is doing at the moment and to prove that this does focus very quickly. Do this. Done. This. Done. This. Done. It is doing a good enough job at focusing, and I'm fairly satisfied with what this is accomplishing at this time. Now let's take this outside so you can see what it sounds like and what it would look like. And this is going to be the outdoors test. As you can see, on its own, the camera is still faring very well when it comes to exposure level levels and that sort of thing. Though you can see that it might still be a little bit overexposed, but I'd say that it looks pretty good. It's not too windy today, so it's probably not the right time to test that sort of thing. Uh, however, I will say that the audio should still sound pretty good and even then, if you're outdoors, even if it's not too windy, you're, you are still going to hear the wind because the microphone is usually going to pick it up pretty well. So again, it's doing a great job here as well. And there you have it. This was the budget 4K vlogging setup. This setup is ideal for the price for sure. And if you are considering getting this camera for vlogging, I would consider getting all of the little accessories that I brought up here as well, such as the larger SD card, this microphone with the wind socket, as well as the GorillaPod. All of these things will come in handy for you, and this is what I would consider the ideal vlogging setup if you're using this guy to vlog in particular. It works great indoors, it works great outdoors, and you can get awesome 4K footage from this camera right out of the box, which is awesome. Not to mention that this lens is already so wide. It's wide enough to be ideal for this style of video. So if you're on a budget, I wouldn't recommend trying to get an additional lens with it and just save up for another one in the future, but this one will get the job done for a long time, I would say. That said, the setup, everything I mentioned is highly recommended here. And if you are interested in the setup or any of the other aspects of the setup that I mentioned throughout the video, such as the accessories and whatnot, I will be making sure to leave affiliate links in the description to these to Amazon so that you can check those out. If you use any of our links to make a purchase and we do get a small commission that does helps us run things a little more smoothly around here. And also we just launched a Patreon recently, which for as little as five bucks a month, you can join our exclusive Discord and we would love to chat with you down there. Links to everything I mentioned in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.